Hey everyone, welcome to Marketing by John. Here are five things that I am personally doing to level up my marketing in 2021. I think you should too. I'm doing it for my own personal brand, I'm doing it for my agency, and I'm doing it for the brands or the companies that I own or co-own. That includes the Noble Conferences, uh, Jackson Jovi, um, Athletic Denim Company. So these are five things that I really... So first of all, these are five things that are based on trends. These are based on things that we are seeing or saw towards the end of 2020 uh, and going into 2021 that are going to be extremely valuable. <clears throat> so let's get right into it. Number one, the first thing is improving the overall brand. So what do I mean by this? Specifically, what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is do anything that improves positive word of mouth. That's right, Going into the technology age, we are going all the way back to the original form of marketing, which is word of mouth. Um, it's just word of mouth has changed where those words go. Sometimes it's on social media. Sometimes it's in a text. Sometimes it's in an email. But quite often, it is still just conversation to people. Um, you know, somebody shoots a friend a text. Hey, thinking about buying a new pair of sneakers. Where'd you get the ones that you have? Oh, I got them here. That word of mouth is still the most important thing to creating a powerful, strong brand into the future. So forget about all the platforms for a moment and just focus on how you can create more word of mouth. Here are things that we're focusing on. First, improve your customer relationships. They are the best source of word of mouth. Rather than you focusing on advertising and conversion rates and, and things like that of, of cold audiences, focus on the people that already love you and try to use their connections to grow your brand in a positive light. So um, improve your customer relationships. How do you do that specifically? I want to make sure you get some tactical advice here. First off, here's an idea. Start a podcast where you interview your customers. That's right, as the CEO of the company or you know, the sales manager or director or whatever, it, whoever it is that you're working for, start a podcast and invite your customers on and interview them. Now, you're like, well, who's going to listen to that podcast? You're not going to call it, you know, the Jackson Jovi podcast. You're going to call it, you know, uh, Fashion Trends 2021. I don't know, something like that, right? You're going to call it the Denim Life and you're going to talk about jeans, you're going to talk about fashion, you're going to talk about lifestyle, you're going to talk about places you wear jeans, you're going to talk about things that people care about, you're going to talk about working out and fitness routines because Jackson Jovi is a athletic denim company. But uh, So create a podcast where you interview your customers and you're not going to interview them about your product, you're going to interview them about their life, their everyday life, things they care about. Hey, Frank, how many kids do you have? Oh, I have five kids. Man, that must have been rough in 2020. Were you homeschooling all of them? Yes, I was. Uh, my wife and I were juggling and trying to work from home. Man, how, did you keep up, up with your workouts? How did you keep up with your workouts? So you're interviewing your customers just like they're a billionaire guest on your podcast. It's going to be so interesting for people because they're going to relate with their story. So very easy idea. Podcasts where you interview your customers. Uh, number two is get advice from them. When you're thinking about new strategies, marketing strategies, product strategies, operate, anything, email or text your customers and say, hey, Frank, uh, you're one of our more loyal customers. We're thinking about launching a marketing campaign where we focus on guys with thick thighs. Um, and here's, what we're, here's how we're going to present it to them. Do you think that would work? Get their advice. They're going to be so invested and they're going to talk to more people about the company because they love that you reached out to them. Um, stemming from that is text them individually. There's a lot of text services out there. Uh, there's Slick Text. Uh, there's Twilio, I think. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk came out or is partnering with on or whatever. It's called Community, where it's not your cell phone. It's a you know it's an app that you use to text to communicate with your customers. But do that. And as the CEO of a company, open yourself up to that. Offer to open up your text line to your customers, a direct line to the CEO. Now, obviously, you can have somebody managing that, and the most important ones comes through to you, but these are things that not a lot of companies are doing, and it brings you down to more of a personal level. So customer relationships, all of those things. Next, uh, we're going to focus on storytelling that relates. Sorry, this is still under brand, though. This is not a new one, but 
part of that brand is is focusing more on storytelling that relates with people. So getting away from the advertising model and getting more towards the marketing, content marketing uh, model and doing it specifically with things that will really hit people emotionally th that they will relate with. Um, so performance videos are videos. You've probably seen them. They're like infomercials, but they're funny. Uh, Dollar Shave Club sort of carved out this niche. Purple Mattresses did them, and now a bunch of companies are doing them. They're doing them well. And it's basically presenting your product. It's uh, it's still very much selling your product. It's an infomercial. But the characters in it, the person presenting it, you know, they have to be likable. They, you have to feel like they're just like you for these performance videos to work. So that's one thing that we're going to be focusing on is, yes, we're still going to be advertising and selling the products or the services, but we're going to be doing it with people who are like your best friend. Uh, another thing we're going to be focusing on is blog posts written in the right voice. So instead of writing them from the company's voice, we're going to write them from your voice. We're going to write them from the customer's voice. We're going to write them from your best friend's voice. Again, becoming more relatable. And uh, the last thing under storytelling is focus more on influencer created content and sharing that. A lot of brands do that. MVMT is a one that is a, a company that does that very well, has from the very start. In fact, that's why they grew so large. More on influencer content in a, in a moment, but we're going to focus more on influencer generated content. Uh, it's more authentic, taps into their audience, and people are more likely to relate with that influencer, even though they don't like to be called influencers, than they are with whatever your brand is slinging to them. Okay, so brand is number one, increase word of mouth. Number two is not overextending our marketing. So there are so many platforms and media outlets and, and, and mediums and, and places that you can put efforts into marketing. It's nauseating podcasts a new platform is called clubhouse twitch tiktok facebook snapchat instagram youtube it keeps going and going and going ott now you can get your show on like amazon video and all that sort of crap it's too much right so take a step back realize that you can't do everything you definitely can't do everything well uh, pick only the platforms that you can dominate. If you can crush YouTube, but that's it, go all in on YouTube. Focus your effort there. A million followers on YouTube is better than 300,000 spread across six different platforms. It's also not even nearly as efficient when you do it that way versus focusing on one platform. You can get experts on YouTube. You can get a team of two or three people that are just absolutely crushing YouTube content for your brand. It's going to be a lot more expensive to try to hire enough people to create great content for six different platforms. Believe me, I know. I own an agency. We have to do that. Um, <clears throat> and then second, do only things that you are amazing at. So pick a platform. If it's YouTube, well, chances are you should have somebody who's amazing at video editing and storytelling and long-form content. If you don't have that, don't focus on YouTube. If you have somebody with a cell phone who's super funny and super in touch with current trends, especially Gen Z trends, then focus them on TikTok. Okay, so that's number two. Number three is influencers. Focus on influencers, but don't do it in a in a non in a traditional way. Really, um, focus a little bit more on bloggers. Focus on people that are trying to connect with other people like them. You know, mommy bloggers is like the stereotypical space of bloggers, but there's blogs in everything and people still read them. It's maybe not as many as, you know, reaching 600,000 people with a Facebook ad, but you're going to have much more of a connection if a blogger loves your product and is willing to represent it, represent your brand. Podcasters are another one. Podcasts now are not just a place where you can go and sponsor the podcast. Connect with a podcaster who might love your products. I'm trying to find something around here. I don't know, dental floss. Um, you know, they love oral care and clean living and things like that. You can be like, listen, we're looking for a long-term partner. We'd love to send you our products for free. We'll pay you, you know, to be, to represent ours and, you know, clean your teeth on the podcast. Say how much you love it. Like whatever you feel is a good fit, but it should be something that they're passionate about. You should connect with that influencer. They should connect with you. 
but make it a long-term relationship rather than just an ad read where it says, this podcast is sponsored by Dental Floss. I don't know. Uh, stemming, this, this, is, this next one is stemming from both of those. Go for quality, not quantity. This is definitely something that we're doing. Um, you know, when influencer marketing first kind of came out, I guess, uh, it was a land grab. Nano influencers, micro influencers, macro influencers. Let's get everybody we can. Let's make sure it's delivering an ROI. While that is very, very important still, treat partnerships with influencers like a job. If your company is looking for a marketing director or they're looking for a director of social media or whatever it might be, you interview people, you put out your job requirements, you you make sure that they fit your culture. Do the same thing with influencers. If you can find an influencer who has a passion for creating content about oral care or, or clean living or healthy living and they love your brand, they can become an ambassador. This is more effective than just hiring an influencer. You hire an ambassador. And now they're not just going to always say like, hey, I work for you know, Dental Floss Company A, uh, but they're going to include the product. They're going to include the different things that you're doing in their everyday lives um, while creating the content that got them the viewership in the first place. Okay. Next one, number four is one-to-one outreach. This one's going to get some haters. Uh, One-to-one outreach is super powerful in today's AI-driven, efficiency-driven world. You know, the software companies that are like, we can automate all of your social media. You don't have to do anything. A company, actually, I just read, uh, got a bunch of funding here locally in Syracuse, Central New York, they automated email. So you have to just type in a couple of words and then it will literally create the entire email for you. So I don't know, maybe that's going to be amazing and and that will work great. But if the whole world is going this way and we all know it, that we're talking to robots and chat bots and email bots, then a way that you can differentiate yourself. Now this goes for sales. This goes for trying to make sales. If you're a B2B company, this goes for trying to get influencers on board. And this goes with goes for trying to get customers is to be, one-to-one, literally find somebody's email, send them an email, say, hey, this is the CEO of Floss Company X, Y, and Z. Um, got your email on LinkedIn. I uh, wondered if you wanted to try some free product. You know? Now, a lot of people are going to say that's not efficient. But remember, our goal, at least number one here, is developing stronger relationships with our customers. That includes developing stronger relationships with our future customers. So, Direct messaging on LinkedIn, commenting on LinkedIn, commenting on any social media platform that's authentic, emailing somebody uh, one-to-one and being real about it. This is a much slower approach, but it's one that we're taking. In fact, for No Bull, our conference, NoBullCon.com, quick little plug to the uh, the conference featuring Gary Vaynerchuk and his brother AJ Vaynerchuk, a bunch of other speakers, to get ticket buyers, instead of running a shitload of ads, um, to get a cold audience, we're going to message people on platforms that love Gary Vaynerchuk. Like Gary's post, he's got 10,000 people that commented. We're going to go and message each one of those 10,000 people and say, hey, do you know Gary's keynoting our conference? Uh, here's a quick little discount. That's going to take an incredible amount of time, but when we do it one-to-one like that, it's going to pay off. You watch. Uh, okay, the last one, number five, is uh, personal content. So this one's really interested, really interesting, really excited about this. It's um, creating personalized content. So picture Nike, brand of all brands, right? Or Apple. Imagine if Tim Cook of Apple started a podcast where he interviewed the customers of Apple and talked with them, like my earlier example, about uh, the, their life, the lifestyle that an Apple user lives. Not talking about computers or iPhones or anything like that. I mean, they could but talking with them as a real person. The podcast would be incredibly popular. Another example, imagine the warehouse team at like, you're going to laugh at this one, at like a UPS uh, having their own podcast endorsed by UPS. Now, the company obviously has to vet who is going to be talking on their podcast. (laughs) Don't just grab any UPS warehouse team or whatever. But Um, The podcast could literally be called The Warehouse Team by UPS. And it's a collection of, you know, three to four people all on a podcast talking about 
you know, the different products that come through, the broken packages they see, the stories, things like that. Um, obviously moderated maybe by management or something like that, but it, especially if they're funny, could be a really funny way to b build the brand of UPS or something like that. You can do the same thing for your manufacturing company. People will listen if it's an, in an industry that they care about. All right, that's it. Till next time, adios.